Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get in part two of the Ted Haggard scandal. Um, if you like this kind of content, I will be doing more like these. Please uh, subscribe, like, and follow. And um, I am a new YouTuber. Uh, and to my, all of my subscribers that I have, I appreciate every one of y'all. And I love and appreciate y'all for helping me on this journey. And um, any like, any subscriber, any uh, share, it will help me. And we're going to go ahead and get into it. Um, we're going to start off from the last part of the part one of the Ted Hager st scandal. And just go for, for, from here. And I do want to say I hope everyone is having uh, a good uh, morning or night, wherever you may be. And um, also... Um, if you we i am here in louisiana um i have a lot of family I, i'm in the part that did not get uh very much damage but uh prayers for the families that have uh been displaced and you know that ha have no homes right now and i i know this isn't a video about that but uh i, I do live in washita and just three hours away from here there is nothing but devastation on the um that side of Louisiana, you know, from Baton Rouge to Thibodeau to New Orleans to Lake Charles, Lafayette, you know, uh, Homa, and er everywhere like that. So just please be in prayer for uh, Louisiana uh, as th they're trying to recover from this. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get into this. Due to the scandal, Haggard went on administrative leave from New Life saying, I am a voluntarily stepping aside from leadership so that the overseer process can be allowed to proceed with integrity. I hope to be able to discuss this matter in more detail at a later date. In the interim, I will send both spiritual advice and guidance on November the 2nd, 2006, Senior Officials told Colorado Springs television station KKTV that Haggard had admitted to some of the claims made by Jones. In an email to New Life Church, petitioners sent that on the evening of November the 2nd, acting senior pastor Rose Par Parsley wrote, It is important for you to know that he, Haggard, confessed to the overseers that some of the accusations against him are true. Haggard admitted that he'd had purchased methamphetamine and received a message from Jones, but denied use of the drugs or having sex with Jones. As it became apparent that at least some, at least some of the claims were, were true, some evangelistical Leaders such as Pat Robertson and Jerry Fodwell sought to distance themselves and downplay Haggard's influence on religious conservatives. His connections to the Bush administration and the importance of of it. That's you know that's usually what they do. And I you know we had talked about this in the Tammy Tammy and uh, Jim Baker scandal. You know. Uh, my dad is a uh, evangelist and a, a minister, so, you know, I was raised in church my whole life. But um, that has, you know, just putting that to the side. But a lot of uh, people like this, you know, when they go through stuff, whether it's wrong. And, yes, I do n believe that everyone needs to be a cannibal that is in leadership like that. But, um, you know, the, the way that they, they handle it, you know, instead of you know, not standing by that person, but saying that we're going to help this person through this, you know, like that, just turning their head and acting like, you know, they don't, they don't want no more association with that person. Uh, you know, what about his wife and children? And I do understand uh, that, that uh, there has to be repercussions, but you know, you're supposed to, everyone is, even if you're a pastor or preacher or anyone, you know, you, you have downfalls and you have problems so um but we're going to just go ahead that's just my own personal intake on on that part right there i just don't think that is right on november 4th 2006 the overseer board of new life church released a statement in haggard that haggard had been fired 
as senior pastor, pastor our investigation in Pastor Haggard's public statements have proven without a doubt that he has committed sexual immoral conduct. Rose Parsley, the associated senior pastor, was the na was the then named Haggard's successor. Haggard then entered counseling by a team including Jack Hayford and Tommy Barnett, who stated that their intention to perform a through and thorough analyze the analyze of Haggard's mental, spiritual, and emotional and physical life included the use of polygraph tests. The team was to include James Dobson, who later stopped a side siding time and constraints. H and B London, Focus on the Family, Vice President of the Church of Clergy, took Dobson's place on the team. After the scandal was publicized, Haggard entered three weeks of intense counseling overseen by four ministers in february 2007 one of those ministers tim ralph said that haggard is complete, completely heterosexual uh, y'all how's it how they're even supposed to know that in, in three weeks I, i'm just so sorry i just i feel you know it's so sad for everyone involved especially you know his wife and his children and uh, he, you know him hiding that like that you know it yes it was wrong it wasn't right and especially when you're preaching to other people and telling them you know what what uh what is right and what is wrong but you know th that's just that's just how that's a problem i have with some of this is how fast you know they just want to just kind of sweep it under the rug just come on he's you know he's total total heterosexual so we're just gonna go ahead and go on with this nobody cannot get healed or get you know i'm not saying if you're like that that you can be healed from that i'm just saying from their perspective they're thinking you know that uh like waving a magic wand like you know someone is automatically gonna going to uh you know uh all of a sudden you're not you don't have that you know that uh attraction or that uh that way you know either way anyways i think y'all know what i'm getting to so i'm trying to say it to where i won't be you know uh monet uh, i mean demonetized so i'm trying to say it in the correct way so but but um you can't just change someone like that you know from their attraction in three weeks and and especially say 100 percent heterosexual i mean come on now on November the 3rd, 2006, Haggard's resignation from his leadership role at the National Association of Evangelistic Evangelisticals was accepted. Eventually, Haggard admitted to having used drugs and having been, you know, the N word. I'm just going to say, you know, by Jones. So he was the N word by Jones. On January 23rd, 2009, Less than one week before the trials of Ted Haggard was released on HBO, officials from Haggard's former church announced that young male church member had come forth in 2006 that there was overwhelming pool of evidence of an inappropriate consensual sexual relationship that went on for a long period of time with Haggard. It wasn't a one-time act. Haggard's successor, Brady Boyd, said the church reached a six-figure settlement with the man who was in his early 20s at the time. Yeah, that is just so, you know, everyone in this situation, I mean, I, I just, you know, I just don't want to, it's just really, uh, it's really sad, especially when it comes to these leaders and that are getting up there preaching, you know, that this is a sin, uh, homosexuality, I mean, anything like that, and I'm not just pointing to this, I'm just saying that because this is in uh, the scandal and part of his, uh, the, you know, him hiding this, but uh if you're gonna walk the walk talk the talk i mean if you're gonna talk to talk, no, I, I said the opposite if you're gonna talk the talk walk the walk as the old saying goes you know according to the man 
the contact was not consensual. Later reports indicated that the relationship did not involve physical contact, but that one on but that on one occasion haggard M again in front of the young man. The man Grant has added that New Life Church paid him 179000 counseling and college tuition. That, y'all, that's just, I, I didn't even know about that part when I, I knew about the first part from watching a little bit of the, when it first came out about Ted Haggard. That is just, this is exactly why people have problems trusting the church. And I'm, I, I, love, I love the Lord. And I, I've been raised in church my whole life, but it's exactly the reason why when new people come in to the house of God or whatever religion you are and something like this happens, it, it really, they have so much problems because of things like this. Haggard openly admitted to an inappropriate relationship with, he, with Taz on CNN. And in the other media, when asked if he had an additional gay relationships that have been unreported, Haggard did not provide a direct answer. Y'all, there's probably several more. I just want to say, I mean, I, I, I'm going to keep going on, but that just don't quit overnight. You know, that, that that's something that if somebody's been doing that, you know, it just it doesn't stop. The ball just don't stop there. So, I, I mean, I, you know, it, it just... I, it would really surprise me. In April 2007, the Haggard family moved to Phoenix, Arizona to start an restoration process. They attended Phoenix First Assembly of God Church, whose pastor, Tommy Barnett, was on Haggard's counseling team. Haggard reached an agreement with New Life Church on a severance package that would pay him through 2007 one of the conditions was that he had to leave the Colorado Springs area. His last reported income was 138000 not including benefits. On February 6, 2008, the new pastor of New Life Church issued a press release announcing that Haggard had requested to leave the team created to restore him and that as Haggard's restoration was incomplete, he was not welcome to return to vocational ministry at New Life. Well, at least they are holding him accountable because I do think he needs to be held accountable because you can't pay off, uh, you know, victims. I want to say that, that young man in that church, he was a victim. And so was that other guy because, you know, he didn't even know that this man was a pastor. You know, and I'm also, on the other hand, you know, glad that they're trying to get him help but on the, the on you know you know my i'm on both sides you know of kind of this but um you know it, it's 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 good that they didn't sweep it under the rug and just let him run, come back in there and just say he's he you know he's healed from this go ahead and resume your position in august 2007 haggard released a statement asking for monetary donations to help support his family while he and his wife attended classes at the university of phoenix questions surfaced about the tax exempt group the families with mission to which haggard had urged people to contribute according to haggard the group would use 10 percent of donations for his administrative cost and for 90 percent to Haggard. However, the group was dissolved in February 2007, according to the Colorado Secretary of State. A few days after Haggard's initial email statement, his restoration team stepped in to say his statement was inappropriate and that Haggard was a little ahead of himself. They indicated that Haggard would not be working at the Dream Center or ministry of any kind and that they advised Haggard to seek secular employment to support himself and his family. And it, I feel sorry for his wife and children, you know, because I mean, but but now with this decision with him not being in there, they made the right decision because number one, he's, you know, he's say, saying that he's uh, completely healed at this time heterosexual so he doesn't need to be around anyone else unless you know he's going to be 
a hundred percent you know that way and uh and not hide it and he doesn't need to be uh you know more victimized and more more uh people in, in any kind of setting any kind of setting any kind of young man or uh, or uh older man you know so it, it just it's sitting there counseling in, in in sessions like that and saying you know believing uh in what he preached to all these people for so long you know try not believing in it but preaching it to them because you have to have it in your heart if you're going to preach it you got to walk the walk in june 2008 with the severance deal of the new life church at an inn haggard was free to live where he wanted and returned to colorado springs home also in june an email surfaced in which haggard admitted the M word again. He must like doing that a, y'all, a lot, y'all. That's just kind of odd to me for him to be, you know, have that many kids and, and you know, whether it's just really, it don't rub me in the right. I'm sorry. I was going to say, uh, you know, it doesn't, doesn't set with me like well. I don't, I don't know. Mm-hmm. But um, with Jones and taking drugs and alleged in 2006, Kurt Serp who provided the email, said Haggard craved, uh, I'll just say sex, uh, you know, uh, the S-E-X word. I don't want to get demonetized. I know everything's changed, and I am a new YouTuber, but, uh, you know, so the word, you know that. He was in a, okay, I've never heard this, but S-E-X, alcoholic, you know, in November, 2008 Haggard said in guest sermons at an Illinois church that his action had actions had roots in his sexual abuse by an adult when he was seven years old he also mm-hmm. agreed to appear in Alexandra Pales Pales I want to say I'm pronouncing this right Pales size HBO documentary about the sex scandal titled the trials of Ted Haggard that premiered on HBO in January 2009. According to the documentary, Haggard had began a new career selling insurance. Okay, y'all, we're going to go ahead and stop here. I will try to do another upload uh, today. Right now in Louisiana, it's 5 o'clock this morning. And um, just be in prayer for everybody else. And also, I want to add something in this. You know, if he never got help when he was you know abused and if it was a male abuser uh this could have been some underlying lining issues and if he did not receive counseling and help with th- these issues that that uh then you know usually you know i'm not saying everyone but um this might be part of him you know with uh the young man and uh a lot that has went on with with him as he uh, kind of suppressed all these feelings and emotions. Okay, thank thank everyone so much. I appreciate all all of my subscribers, and I appreciate everyone for all their sweet comments, and especially my subscriber that that comments on all the Liberace documentaries and the Liberace uh slideshow uh, videos i really appreciate you and it really means a lot to me and thank you for your encouragement and i'm gonna go ahead and um i'm drinking my coffee and getting ready for my morning and um thank y'all thank everyone so much and please be blessed today and uh i love every one of y'all and thank thank you and keisha ku here i'll see you in the next one Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get in part two of the Ted Haggard scandal. Um, if you like this kind of content, I will be doing more like these. Please uh, subscribe, like, and follow. And um, I am a new YouTuber. Uh, and to my, all of my subscribers that I have, I appreciate every one of y'all. And I love and appreciate y'all for helping me on this journey. And um, any like, any subscriber, any uh, share, it will help me. And we're going to go ahead and get into it. Um, we're going to start off from the last part of the part one of the Ted Haggard st- scandal. 
and just go for, for, from here. And I do want to say I hope everyone is having a, a good uh, morning or night, wherever you may be. And um, also, um, if you, we, I am here in Louisiana. Um, I have a lot of family. I, I'm in the part that did not get uh, very much damage, but uh, prayers for the families that have uh, been displaced and you know that ha have no homes right now. And I, I know this isn't a video about that, but uh, I, I do live in Washita, and just three hours away from here, there is nothing but devastation on the. Um, that side of Louisiana, you know, from Baton Rouge to Thibodeau to New Orleans to Lake Charles, Lafayette, you know, uh, Homa, and er everywhere like that. So just please be in prayer for uh, Louisiana uh, as th they're trying to recover from this. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get into this. Due to the scandal, Haggard went on administrative leave from New Life saying, I am a voluntarily stepping aside from leadership so that the overseer process can be allowed to proceed with integrity. I hope to be able to discuss this matter in more detail at a later date. In the interim, I will send both spiritual advice and guidance on November the 2nd, 2006, Senior Officials told Colorado Springs Television Station KKTV that Haggard had admitted to some of the claims made by Jones. In an email to New Life Church, petitioner sent the, on the evening of November the 2nd, acting senior pastor Rose Par Parsley wrote, It is important for you to know that he, Haggard, confessed to the overseers that some of the accusations against him are true. Haggard admitted that he'd had purchased methamphetamine and received a message from Jones, but denied use of the drugs or having sex with Jones. As it became apparent that at least some, at least some of the claims were, were true, some evangelistical Leaders such as Pat Robertson and Jerry Fodwell sought to distance themselves and downplay Haggard's influence on religious conservatives. His connections to the Bush administration and the importance of of it. That's you know that's usually what they do. And I you know we had talked about this in the Tammy Tammy and uh, Jim Baker scandal. You know. Uh, my dad is a uh, evangelist and a, a minister, so, you know, I was raised in church my whole life. But um, that has, you know, just putting that to the side. But a lot of uh, people like this, you know, when they go through stuff, whether it's wrong. And, yes, I do n believe that everyone needs to be a cannibal that is in leadership like that. But, um, you know, the, the way that they, they handle it, you know, instead of you know, not standing by that person, but saying that we're going to help this person through this, you know, like that, just turning their head and acting like, you know, they don't, they don't want no more association with that person. Uh, you know, what about his wife and children? And I do understand uh, that, that uh, there has to be repercussions, but, you know, you're supposed to, everyone is, even if you're a pastor, a preacher, or anyone, you know, you, you have downfalls and you have problems so um but we're going to just go ahead that's just my own personal intake on on that part right there i just don't think that is right on november 4th 2006 the overseer board of new life church released a statement in haggard that haggard had been fired as senior pastor pastor our investigation and Pastor Haggard's public statements have proven without a doubt that he has committed sexual immoral conduct. Rose Parsley, the Associated Senior Pastor.